come down around the corner and what you see on the table is not your not your average everyday bum, but your son or daughter. I'm sorry? He's dead. Now, y'all were dead with the bum, though, too, right? Okay. Okay, good. I'm glad that you said, ah, uh, because I want to address something here. Why is that bum's life worth less than the son or daughter? That child's a part of you. Okay. Yes, there is an emotional attachment you have there, but what about this bum's life? That bum was somebody's child. And what? Okay, we got this one and then this one here. Okay, it's true that I care about my kid more than I do about a bum, and yeah. my adrenaline probably just bumps. Um, but I would still do the fucking same thing. Hey, Fred, what are you doing? I might, in fact, have my gun. Uh, there wouldn't be any conversation. But you would still give Fred the option of not killing. No, no. Okay. Okay. I just have a question. How many of us have lost that from the kingdom? Yes. I like that question. How many of us are one step from being a bum? Right. <laughs> okay. With this economy, I think several of us are, you know, not that far. Two or three payments. Yes. It doesn't take much. And all of a sudden, you're on the street. Okay. It doesn't matter. The bum is a life. The bum is a life. You said, I'm sorry. You said it's reiterated. It's that emotional attachment. I mean, already I'm a more attached to you people in here than I would be a ranked stranger than I maybe a bum or whatever other ranked stranger. Because there's already been some interplay. Because there's been some interplay, there's some emotional attachment. Okay. Well, let's take the. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, if it was the bum, I would probably double tap him in the heart. If it was my kid, I'd probably pop his knees and his shoulders and then his heart. Okay, so you'd torture him first, okay. <laughs> you sound exactly like my wife. <laughs> sound just like my wife. <laughs> okay, let's remove the extremes here for a second. We'll, we'll we're still going to deal with a bum, but instead of it being your kid laying there, let's say it's a bum that you know. He's the guy who has washed, spit on your windshield and wiped it off every day when you're on your way to work for the past two years. So you know his name's Joe, and he spits on your windshield. He's going with Fred. <laughs> I'm sorry? He's going to Fred. Collateral damage. Oh. So, so you're killing the bum, too. Okay. Collateral stabbing, then you kill Uncle But I mean, you know, he's the, he's the guy that you've seen. So you, you, he's not of your flesh and blood, but you have a somewhat emotional attachment and not a negative emotional attachment. To him. We'll, give him, we'll give him some Windex, okay? It doesn't matter. The bum has to die? The bum has to die. Okay, why does the bum have to die? I don't want there to be the slightest possibility of a conflict in the story. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Patrick is not only taking out Uncle Fred, he is taking out any witnesses as well. Okay. <laughs> Fish, I have a shovel and no conscience. 
Y'all are a much different group than I have ever had with this particular workshop. Can I say pig farm? Pig farm, okay. Yeah. Now, I still got this one. you mentioned earlier karma, okay? Now, I think people have an odd view of karma because karma is not what the Western folks have made it out to be. In Eastern religion, I've got a nodder back here, and I bet you she can explain it even better than I can. In Eastern religions, karma is? Action. Action. Simple. End of story, action. And actions cause results, which cause desires, which cause other actions. That's how you get the karma that we think of, but it's actually just The action. actions. But what in Western society, what we think of is karma, and we'll, we'll make it easy for me to understand. We'll think of it as karma cookies, okay? We have bad karma cookies, and those will be the stale Oreos that nobody wants to eat. And we have good karma cookies. Those will be the white chocolate chip macadamia nut coconut every whatever cookies that everybody likes to eat, okay? Fresh out of the oven. You don't like them from the Double Tree hotels, you know? I mean, it's right there, big, fluffy. So you've got good karma cookies and you've got bad karma cookies. Now, the way Western society sees karma is, ooh, I did something bad. I got an Oreo. But now I'm going to help this little lady across the street. I did something good. I have got my white chocolate chip macadamia nut. So I've got a bad karma cookie, and I've got a good karma cookie. They'll both keep you alive if you're starving. They will keep you alive if you're starving. They'll give you a little boost of energy. Now, the thing about the karma cookies is since we've got bad, that right here is the zero karma zone. It's a zero, so over here it's all negative numbers. Over here it's all positive numbers. So if we've got plus one and minus one, and we stick them together, what do we get? Zero. Zero. So we've balanced out our karma in Western society as we see karma, correct? No. That's not how you view karma? How do you view karma? You pay no matter If you've done something wrong, you're going to pay that karma no matter whether you've done something good to balance it out. You still have to pay for what you've done. Period. Okay, so if you do something bad, the universe is going to give you the boot to the head no matter what you do over here to make up for it. And if you're trying to make up for it by doing good stuff, that doesn't even it out because you're personally you're, you're trying to do it. You're not doing it just because it's what's right to do. Do we not teach our children to make amends for their... There's a difference between making amends and actually, I don't want to say suffering, but you still have to pay for the things you do. No matter whether... Isn't that my children, what do you do? I mean, I mean, what you're saying, though, is you're paying for what you do by doing something good. Yeah, but think of it this way. You know, when my kids get in trouble... They're still going to be in trouble. They can say they're sorry. They can do things to make up for it. But they still have to understand this is what you've done wrong. You're grounded for two months because you did this wrong because it's a learning experience. Yeah. So my question is, obviously, with our children and a human-to-human -human interaction, we can say that's wrong or whatever. But who is the person that has the cosmic rule book on what's good and bad? Exactly. I mean, how? Okay, so you're. We have to go back with personal intent, right? Too. I mean, we don't know enough to know everything, right? But if our intentions are to try to do as good as we can, 
quite what all of you know. I think you've got to go back to the first potential. But it's still good so, as a relative. I mean, if, if the universe has an issue with humanity being uh, the odd man out, essentially, because we're a living, functioning organism that happens to be carbon based. And we don't know that. We're just doing along doing our thing. But the universe actually has an issue with all of us. Then anything we do gets us a sale. Okay, so I, what I'm picking up that I can hear is, you know, you're asking about the universal rule book that where the, the karma is handed out and what the universe... The, the good and bad is what trips me up. The good and bad is what trips you up, okay. And and you're talking about intent, the personal intent. I was just going back to what your definition was, it's, it's kind of cause and effect. Everybody would agree that sticking your head in a burning hot fire is bad, right? Effect of that is that now you have a burnt hand. So if you're doing something good over here, it's not going to take away the, 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 the effect that you yeah, now have a burnt yeah. hand. You still have to suffer with that burnt hand, exactly. no matter how many ice cubes you grab with this one. Okay. But if you follow the pattern, you action, you burn your hand. Um, effect, you have a burnt hand. Desire, damn, I don't want to do that again. And the next one is, I'm not going to stick my hand in the fire again. Right, so there's your action. Bang, 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 done. And sometimes, though, the action of putting your hand in the fire may have been a really good action. Maybe not for you personally, but it might have been a good action for, say, your entire society. Maybe you were saying. The needs of the many greatly outweigh the needs of the one. Yes. You're at a bonfire and somebody. Uh, uh, Roman society yeah. said what was good for the state was good for the people. So one particular Roman, to demonstrate the resolve of the Roman people and to keep this war going, stuck his hand in a fire and burned it to a stuff. Impressed the hell out of his enemies who sued for peace, Rome came out ahead. Question? But look at the intent. There's the intent, the intent was for him to demonstrate what one person resolved. Yes, but that doesn't make any difference because the state survives. Now, in regards to this particular action, killing an individual who's killed other people, the fact that you're going to kill him and collateral damage. That's <laughs> his new name, He's dead. In an embarrassing position. No question at all that you had to kill him in order to try and save collateral damage. <laughs> but failed. You're going to get the money. You stop the killing. And according to society's you're rules and mores, if you don't get caught, you're a hero. Then there's that. Yeah. I said, then there's that. All that. And you were you were saying. I'm sorry, I, I had multiple voices going on in my head at the same time, so. I was saying, but the burn hand thing, if everybody died at the bonfire tonight and some idiot throws an aerosol can into the fire, the person that grabs it out right. is yeah. the hero. You're trying to save a burning face. But, but my point was that, that you still have the burn hand no matter how good of the intention you have, and you still have to suffer that the effect of having the burn hand, even though yes, you learned that it's probably not a good idea to stick your hand in the fire. It doesn't, there's no way, there's nothing that's going to take that burn away from your hand. And if you burn into a stub, you're not going to get your hand back, no matter how many wonderful things you do over here. You, can't you still have to deal with the effect of sticking your hand in the fire and that to be Okay. But you have the good feeling that you saved someone if you stick, stick a dynamite out of the fireplace. And somebody in that group might give yeah. you a job, and now you've got a job for the rest of your life that you wouldn't have had before. Mm -hmm. The action of intentionally putting your hand in the fire is caused by the desire of wanting to save somebody or, or whatever that is. Right. So the, the intent, the desire that caused the action was a noble action. So you're going to live with the consequences of that action. Because you chose it on purpose. But you still got a burnt hand. You still got a burnt hand. You're not going to get the burnt hand back. Yes, I mean that. That that. In that. particular case, I've got a lot of money. I'm a well-known hero, but at the same time, I know in my heart, I took out the bad guy. Right. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
So the universe has granted it to you. Now, here's, here's where we're... Here's the thing. If we view karma... And it really depends on your view. If you've studied it in you know, Eastern philosophy, or if you studied it in Western philosophy, or you've come up with your own version of karma, whatever it is, no matter what, you're the one that is doling out the karma to yourself. Whether it's in the Eastern philosophy, whether it's in your own philosophy, you're the one, the universe, does not have a bucket of these cookies over here and a bucket of these cookies over here and a big tote board it says, oh, look what sellers did. <laughs> you know, and they don't dole it out. You dole the cookies out to yourself. You make the decisions that cause the action and the desire and so on and so forth. Now, yes, there may be external influences that cause you to have that desire and make that decision. And yes, you'll still have the burnt hand if you stick your hand in the fire. But you have made that decision for yourself. So, using that knowledge and that form of logic, if I go and kill Uncle Fred and collateral damage, <laughs> we've never had to kill collateral damage before, but this, is the first, this has been one of those workshops, and I'm good with it, in my heart, in my soul, in my head, if I am okay with it, and understand, I'm not telling you that I am. This is the scenario we're presenting. If I am okay with it, then what am I going to have to pay back to anybody? Who am I going to owe? I'm sorry? <laughs> Oh, I've got to pay, buy the tires and rims. Okay. <laughs> Smart ass. <laughs> but that, my point being, who in the universe do I owe anything to? Who do I have to pay back for what I've done if I'm the one who creates my karma, my actions, if I'm in control of my destiny, who do I owe? And that, and you, you're saying you, yeah. and and you know that's the thing. That's what this has been all about from the get-go. Something that I said, and everybody heard, and might have registered, and some of you, I'm sure, registered it, you know, well, and knew exactly what my intent was. Some of you might have registered it, but weren't thinking about it. Is how different we each are. While we all started out with, no, it's not okay to kill someone, we gave it different situations and we still have a division here. Me, personally, if we want to look at what does Merv think, not what the guy in the scenario thinks, what does Merv think? Merv comes around the corner, he's going to pull the trigger on Uncle Fred. He's not going to say, hey, you, kiss my ass, nothing. He's going to tap him and put him down. He's not going to take out collateral damage <laughs> because collateral damage did nothing to him. <laughs> and collateral damage is not threatening him yet. I'm sorry, collateral damage has been spinning on my windshield. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I deserve it. <laughs>